So let's move over to our environment and begin setting up Forefront UAG to publish Outlook Exchange web app. Now, so the first thing we need to do is jump over to our Exchange server, open the Exchange uh, management console and make these changes that we need. So the first thing we want to do is expand our server configuration and highlight the client access node. Down here in the middle bottom middle pane here, go ahead and right click where it says OA on the Outlook web app tab, choose properties, select the authentication tab and you'll see by default again it's set up to use forms based authentication that's fine so we're gonna go ahead and select to use a, the option to use a different authentication mode and we're gonna select basic. Basic authentication does provide clear text passwords so passwords are sent in the clear and there's an indication of that here just as an FYI this transaction is fully protected with SSL and TLS so no passwords are actually being spent in the clear on the wire that is fully protected so we are very secure here so we'll choose OK and here Exchange is going to give you a, a couple of warning messages. The first one says that before these changes can take effect, you do need to issue a IIS reset command. And we'll certainly do that, but we have some additional changes to make before we can do that. Also, it indicates that we need to make the authentication change to the ECP virtual directory on the same website as well. So we'll choose OK. And we'll highlight the Exchange control panel or ECP tab here. And we will right click on ECP and choose Properties select the authentication tab and then we will select a basic authentication there as well. So we'll choose OK. Again Exchange is going to tell us that we need to issue an IIS reset command so we'll certainly do that. So choose OK. The next thing that we want to do in order to support publishing Exchange Outlook Web App with Forefront UAG is to install that SSL certificate. Now here I'm going to demonstrate how to obtain a certificate from an internal enterprise PKI or public key infrastructure. If you don't have an existing PKI and don't wish to configure one, you always have the option to purchase certificates from a, a public third party certificate authority. Uh, explaining that process in detail here is unfortunately outside the scope of this lesson, but there's plenty of guidance on the internet regarding how to accomplish this. I'm just going to go ahead and open up a, a management console. And I'm going to use this to request a certificate from our PKI. So I'm going to go ahead and choose File, Add, Remove, Snap In. I'm going to add the certificates, Snap In, and select Add. And the next thing I want to do is select Computer Account. We need to install this certificate in the personal store of the Computer Accounts um, certificate store. So we'll choose Next. Local Computer is fine. Choose Finish. And OK. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to expand the personal node and highlight certificates, and you'll see that there's already a certificate here issued to exc01, which is the host name of my Exchange server. It's issued by exc01 as well. So this is the self-signed certificate that is generated when you install. Exchange Outlook Web Access or the CAS role. I need a certificate from my PKI so I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose request new certificate. All tasks request new certificate and we'll choose next and I'm going to select a uh, certificate that's generated by my certificate enrollment policy. So this is the AD enrollment policy. That's fine. So I'll choose next and then I'm going to select the computer a certificate and choose enroll. So the status indicates that it's completed successfully, which is excellent. So I'll choose Finish. And now I have a certificate issued by my internal PKI. And again, since my Forefront UAG server is a member of the domain, it will trust this particular certificate issued by this CA. So the next change we need to make is actually to bind that SSL certificate in IIS to the Exchange Outlook Web Access website. So open the IIS Manager and then expand the default website. And then on the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and select bindings or edit bindings here. Okay. And then we want to scroll down and find the HTTPS protocol. And it will be listed twice, so we need to make this change twice. So here is the first setting. So we'll choose edit. And then for the certificate, we want to drop down and select our certificate that was issued by our internal PKI. And if we're in doubt, we can select view and actually view this certificate. So that's good. 
that's the correct certificate. And we'll do the same here for the uh, remaining HTTPS binding here. So we'll choose OK and close. And that's the only changes you need to make inside of IIS. And at this time, we're actually done with that console. We can close that out and open an elevated command prompt and issue that IIS reset command. So once that's complete, we can close that out. The next thing I recommend doing is just making sure that everything's working correctly from an internal client. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to my internal client and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, browse the Exchange Outlook Web Access site and make sure everything's working correctly. So now we're being prompted for basic authentication. So this, uh, this credential prompt is using basic authentication and not form space, so that's great. Excellent. So I'm in my mailbox using Exchange OWI. And in addition, the certificate is correctly bound because I don't have any indications of certificate hosting mismatches or warnings. If I select certificates, I can actually view that this is the correct certificate for the particular website. So everything looks in good order there. So now we're ready to publish this using Forefront UAG. So let's go back over to our UAG server and open up the management console. And I'm going to go ahead and expand the HTTPS Connections Highlight Portal. And then we'll click Add here under the application. So we're going to add an application to this existing portal. So I'll choose Next. And then I want to select, a uh, for the application type, I want to select Web Application. And then I want to scroll down from this drop-down list and choose Microsoft Exchange Server All Versions. Choose Next. And at this point, the wizard's going to ask us specifically which version of Exchange we're using, which is fine. We're using, in our environment, Exchange Server 2010. And we wish to publish the Outlook Web Access service. You do have support for Outlook Anywhere and, Ex and Exchange Active Sync, but for our purposes and the purposes of this lesson, we're going to just publish Exchange OWA. So we'll choose Next. It's going to ask us for an application name. This is the name that's going to appear in the portal. This doesn't have to resolve to an IP address in public DNS or anything like that, or even private DNS. It's just simply the, the name of the link as it will appear in the portal. So we'll just give it a name and choose Next. Now, here's our endpoint policies again. and. Uh, we're going to leave these all at the defaults because we're going to talk in detail in a, in a separate lesson later on in this series about endpoint policies. But for now, we're just going to leave the settings in their defaults and choose Next. Next, we'll select the option to configure an application server. Uh, you do have the option to configure a farm of application servers. And this is essential if you're uh, publishing Exchange Outlook Web App and you have a more than one CAS server. So for high availability, many organizations deploy uh, multiple CAS servers. And in this case, Forefront UAG can publish the farm and provide the load balancing itself. In our environment, we have a single CAS server, so we're going to select the option just to configure a single application server and choose Next. Now it's going to ask us for the IP or the host of this individual CAS server. So I'm actually just going to double click in here and I'll begin typing. Now, if you attempt to simply type in the IP address of this server, for example, this is the IP address of the CAS server. However, uh, publishing this with UAG will fail because the IP address is not listed as uh, the name on the SSL certificate. So the name that you put in here needs to match the name, uh, the principal name on the SSL certificate for this to work correctly. So let's do that. And all of the paths here are installed by default for you. So the wizard understands how, uh, what folders that this particular application uses. So we're going to go ahead and leave that there. Uh, we'll leave the default port on 443, which is fine. And we're going to accept the default to use the public hostname of portal.vintagesurf.com. This is the obviously the, the fully qualified domain name of the portal itself. And since that's already registered in public DNS, we don't really need to make any changes there. So we'll choose Next. 
Now, Forefront UAG supports single sign-on or SSO, and what that means is that if I publish multiple applications, I do have the ability to uh, enable SSO, which makes the user experience much better for and, and seamless for our users. For example, if a user logs into Exchange Outlook Web Access, accesses their mailbox, and then clicks on a link to a, a a document in a SharePoint site that is also published with Forefront UAG. If SSO is enabled, then the user doesn't receive an additional authentication prompt when they hit the next application. And it's easy enough to do. Just select Add, highlight your uh, directory server that you wish to use, and choose Select, and uh, you're good to go. So we'll choose Next. And then, of course, the portal link. This is, again, the name of the portal link. You can actually configure folders in Forefront UAG for better organization. So if I had a uh, folder of administration tools or I had a folder of uh, productivity tools or something like that, I certainly could do that. I'm not going to do that here. We'll just leave that as, as the default. We'll leave all of the defaults. We can add a description if we need to, which will appear in the portal. So if the user of the name of the application is not necessarily intuitive, you could add some information here as well. I'm also going to select the option to open this in a new window. So this is going to actually open the application when I click on it in a new window, and we'll demonstrate that shortly. So we'll choose Next. And for authorization, this is a, kind of a somewhat confusing tab for most folks, is that it indicates that users and groups can view and access the application via the portal, and by default, it authorizes all users. Now, this is important to point out that it doesn't mean that anyone can log in to uh, the portal and access these applications anonymously. It doesn't mean that. What it means is that once you have authenticated to the portal, then all of the users who are authenticated will be able to see this application. Now, if if that's not the default or if we don't want that particular setting, for example, maybe there's an application that you only want uh, HR managers to access, you can deselect that option, create an active directory group for those users, and that way anybody who logs into the portal will be able to see portal applications, but only users in that specific group would be able to see this application. But I want to make this available to everybody, so I'm going to go ahead and, and select that option and choose Next. And of course it's just going to review our settings. We'll click Finish, and at this point we have configured the application. So you know the trick, as, uh, as, as you're probably getting used to this now, let's go ahead and save the configuration, and then we will activate the configuration as well. So the activation is completed successfully. We'll choose Finish. And we'll go up and make sure that we can see the information details. And we will wait for TMG to synchronize. And once that's done, we'll actually go out and test the application. Great. So TMG uh, storage is synchronized. Activation has been completed successfully.